G'day and welcome to our Melbourne Cup 2013 preview. And that was my awful Australian accent. Uh, we will be going through all the runners in the field, and we also have a sweepstake that you may have entered on Twitter over the past week by letting Michael know who, uh, well, if you wanted to enter. And of course, we're joined by Michael, who is what for once on time today which I th found amazing. Another thing that would be amazing, if Adam could tip a winning nap. Thank you. Which he, <laughs> which he, no! which he, which, which he will attempt to do That's today. Um, Adam, how did your last nap go? Can we just not talk Naps. about that? It, it, was, <laughs> it was probably one of the worst moments I've ever had watching a horse race. It was like slow motion, how it just unfolded. And we just have to say that that was the fugue who got caught Sorry, by the magician. I'm, and... I'm and and, uh, well, I can't really say anything bad about Callum. Just look at him there. It's just lovely. <laughs> I feel uh, sorry for his nap on Saturday. As I mentioned, we are doing a sweepstake. Uh, and, Michael, what is our glamorous prize that we have? Our glamorous prize was a £5 free bet, but the very kind Adam on the end, well, he might be on the end, I don't know where he is, to be honest, I am on the end. Um, has also offered a £5 bet, so we'll have a £10 bet to the winner of the sweepstakes. So that's quite nice. I would Adam. offer you some minstrels, but they're mine. And also, Adam has also been very generous. No! Yes. No. If, no. His nap, if his nap doesn't win today, no. the, winner, today. the winner of the sweepstake will be able to request he does a dare to be no. completed live on the show next week. Obviously, no nudity, nothing really weird. No, we, like, we can't deal with that. Yeah, like, we've had people request that before with Ben Dobson. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank, thank God. <laughs> but if, if, if you win and you want Adam to complete a dare next week on the show, let us know, because we will force him to do that because he bows the peer pressure. No, um, <laughs> no. For, with, Without further ado... Michael, are you ready with our first? Uh, I uh, I am ready. Our first horse. Our is first horse, big money ball. The 2011 winner, Duna Den. As you can see, my board is quite rubbish because you've got only a tiny bit of space down here. But Duna Den is the first horse, and the first, oops, the first name to be drawn is oh. Callum Medell. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> just, just. I knew that as I was saying to Callum that I actually fancy Duna Den a little bit today. Um, uh, okay, so as as we as we are going to go forward with this, we are going to talk about the horse when it's drawn from the hat. Um, so, can any of us give Duna Den a chance tonight? Is Callum in with a chance of the sweepstake? Well, he, he had a slim chance, and then that happened. <laughs> um, <laughs> probably giving him all chance. I'll see, yeah. Uh, it, all seriousness, I mean, he's just won it in 2011. He's a Caulfield Cup winner, superb horse, but, you know, he's off top weight. He's got a good barrier draw in uh, in one. Uh, but barrier draw? Yeah, that's what, that's what the Australian That's saying. what the uh, Australian <laughs> call it. Uh, but Dunedin, okay. uh, I can't fancy him. I just think it's a tough tough ask off 9-3, uh, off uh, being a seven-year-old. Um, it'll take some horse to win that, especially he's he only seventh last year as well, and uh, he, he'll do well to even match that. Yeah. Uh, I, I was saying before that I actually... I, I thought he had an each-way chance, uh, but... Oh, he's a horse that I just get annoyed at with the way they campaigned him. Like Callum made a good point earlier that he, he's campaigned for prize money, but he's a two miler that they run over about a mile, a mile and two facing horses like St Nicholas Abbey, and it's okay. just ridiculous to me. But two miles brings out the best in him for sure, and he's got an each way chance. And I, I think Callum may not necessarily be in with a great chance of winning, but at least he's come first in something tonight. <laughs> Uh, Mike, Michael, our, our Melbourne okay. Cup expert. Do you, uh, do you give Duna Den a chance? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I, Next. I, I, I could, I could, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not completely out of the question, but I can't see it happening from top weight, given the record of it. I'm No, it's it's not for me, I don't think. I'd rather be back in Red Caddo, in, for example. Yeah. Who, um, finished second, who finished second to him in 2011. Adam, does he have a chance, yes or no? No, but you have to respect him. Because that's, he that's, is that's a former winner, so yeah. you have 
Tris Saxon, and to be fair, he's actually been running some okay races this year. I mean, he was second to Novelist, and second to St. Nicholas Abbey, so you can't exactly rule him out, because it's been over a trip that's not at his best for him. Um, he's had a longer break coming into this, which seems would probably help him, but he's not my idea of a horse that's going to be in the first four. And also, the same as well, this year he comes it without a prep run in Australia, which I think is another negative. I mean, he won the Caulfield yeah. last year, he won the Geelong before winning the, um, when he won it, and obviously, you know, he finished well beaten behind off ever in a joke of a pre foy um, So I'd rather, <laughs> have seen, I'd rather have seen him have a run over in Australia, to be honest. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, the next horse to be assigned a Twitter user... It is Green Moon. Last, last year's winner, Green Moon. Yeah, we've had the first two winners. We've had the first winner, and we had the second. Second of the previous winners. Um, P.D. Chad. P.D. Chad. I can see that. I've forgotten what his first name Ooh. is. It might be Paul. P.D. Chad. <laughs> you have good. Green Moon, last year's winner. Drawn, still 10. Adam? Does P.D. Chad have a chance of winning? He, well, it's the first he's in first time blinkers tomorrow, so you've got to consider that is going to hopefully bring back some improvement. Um, he's, he's got to, again, he's, you've got to respect him because he's, he's won the race before, but I, he's another one that I don't see winning. I mean, some of his runs this season haven't exactly been as good as last season, so I wouldn't be too confident in him, to be quite honest. Yeah. Uh, Callum? His his Cox Plate run was very similar to the one last year where he, he was he didn't really particularly fit, but he, he did show, like he was in good heart. So I mean he's nine pound higher and be tough because might bring out something. Um obviously, you know, it's very tough to be winning the race again off this mark. But I think he'll well. I so he'll he'll definitely be in the first ten. But I don't I don't think he'll win. Yeah, uh, I, I pretty much Agree with uh, what Callum just said. Uh, Adam, what do you? Uh, not Adam, Michael. I don't know why that's happening again. recently. Me, me, and, me and Callum can't get names right at the moment. No. Um, <laughs> Shut up, Woody. I, I would say he's possibly got a better chance than Duna Den, but no, he's still not really on my list of horses. I see. I think it's a high quality cup this year, and I think Green Moon may. He was a bit of a surprise winner last year, and I can't see him winning it this year, I don't think. Uh, I wouldn't put people off backing him, but I wouldn't be backing him myself, really. You've got... Uh, his form hasn't really been as good as you prob you might like in comparison to some of the other runners in the uh, in the uh, running up to this uh, cup, basically. Yeah, and, uh, well, next, in the, the race card order, we have one of our world travellers, uh, Red Caddo. Red, Red Cado. By the way, this is drawn from the very special hat of Arc de Triomphe. Thank you very much, Michael Harris. Um, and the next horse to be drawn, next the next person to the next be horse. drawn, <laughs> is Red Cado is Trajan 77. Trajan 77. I believe his name is Andy. Andy, yeah. Andy slash Trajan 77. You have Red Cado. And uh, we'll start with Michael. Oops. Red Cano. Uh, <laughs> this horse is a ridiculous price for what it's done, really. He absolutely loves going abroad. When I went to visit him, he is so quiet in the stables, then on the track he comes alive, but he adores attention, and that's what he gets when he goes abroad. This is why he really he loves basically going abroad, and that's why he'll improve. I think he will run really well. If he doesn't win today, which I tomorrow, in fact, I suppose, in... Uh, English terms. Um, he, I wouldn't be surprised, but I think he's still got. He's going to win something in um, Australasia or uh, Asia in the next couple of months, and then he'll probably be retired. So this will probably be his uh, yeah. uh, Australian swan song. But um, I think he's got a really decent chance in it. I, c I wouldn't be able to be put off him really. You know, it's red cado. Anything can happen. Yeah, well, the year he came second in uh, behind Junior Den, people sort of wrote him off because they thought the ground was too firm, but it just seems to be a different horse completely, whether he's racing in Hong Kong or, or Flemington, like today. Uh, at, ho at home, he's a, di he's a good horse, a very good horse, but on the continent, it just brings a different side of Red Caddo. And you can't rule him out uh, today, well, tomorrow-ish, uh, at all. 
that's going to be a running theme that we're all going to get today and tomorrow <laughs> mixed up, isn't it? Yep. Uh, Callum, Red Caddo thoughts? Yeah, he's, he's a different horse and he's abroad, isn't he? And obviously he finished second in 2011, beaten by the smallest of noses. Um, last year he finished eighth, though, beaten five and three-quarter lengths. So it's another tough ass from a, a wide draw, three pound higher than this year and seven pound higher than when he was fin finished second. Um, he's done well this season pretty good this season uh, over here but um, I think it's a tough ask for him to be winning it, very tough but again he'll run, it, he'll run his race Yeah and uh, Adam? My big doubt about him and this is not the horse itself he has got an awful draw in 23 that's the only negative that I have for Red Cado apart from that he has been consistent this season, his second to Royal Empire at Newbury was good fourth to Ballista Curve last time out at the Curra um, as Michael said, this is what this is the type of race he enjoys, and I would love it if he could win. But he, he, I could, I'll put him up as an eat. I put him up to be in the first six. Say I wouldn't yeah. if he won. I wouldn't be surprised. But I realistically, I'd say the first six if he can get over from the wide draw. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I'll also say that if anyone has any particular views on the Melbourne Cup, um, please tweet me. Uh, or Tweet me and I'll read it out to the guys and we'll answer it uh, at Luke Elder 13 um, So let us know what you fancy. If you're staying up for the race, are any of us staying up for till 4 a.m.? I, I will. I will set yeah. an alarm for 3:59 yeah. and I will go to bed shortly after. Well, we'll I, I I haven't missed the race live for the last two years. Obviously, last year it was easier when I was in Vancouver, but I, I think I'm going to be part of the 4 a.m. club today. Yeah. Um, next horse on the list that shall be assigned is one that we're familiar with, Sea Moon. Sea Moon indeed. Uh, and the person who has picked it is... Uh, Ger Stapleton. I think I pronounced that correctly. Ger Stapleton, you have Sea Moon, my friend. Uh, and this one must have a live chance, Adam. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean... This season, he's gone out to Australia now. He was, he was sold out there. Um, he's won the Herbert Power last time out in uh, by three quarters of the length. He was disqualified the time before. If you look at some of his form in Britain as well, he actually did have some good form. He, he, I, I actually looked back and he won the Voltager as a free roll. Yeah. And he beat Alcazim by eight lengths. And you look at how Alcazim has come on since then. Um, he must have an excellent chance tomorrow. Um, the two-mile trip will be in his favour, I think, tomorrow, because he has been running over some shorter distances, and I've seen a couple of people tweeting about how they think the extra distance will suit, and I agree with that. Um, he's good enough, and I won't be surprised if he runs really well tomorrow. And he's got a decent draw in seven as well, so... Yeah, I think that's that's one of the most positive things, really, the draw. People are making such a big thing of it, and that how Mount Athos is drawn out in the car park. As Callum, can you give Simon a chance over the longer trip? Yeah, I think he's got a huge chance. Um, he's the best horse in the race for me, I think, uh, in terms of class. It's just whether he can show it at two miles. I mean, yeah. he was a very good horse for Sir Michael Stout. He's really starting to come over his, to his himself uh, in Australia, obviously winning his last two. And they were just messing around at, at real inadequate trips before then. But he's won his last two. He's, he's shown a lot of... Uh, um, a good heart to win both of those races. They, they weren't bad races at all. Um, it's just whether he stays. I mean, he he, he finished uh, third in the 2011 Ledger, which ironically, there's four. The first four in that Ledger are running here, and um, which is just astonishing, really. And not only one of them is training Britain uh, at the moment. So, um, yeah, Hickmott Williams uh, clan have got six, and I think he's their classiest one. Um, I, I I think he's got a big chance. I have just realised, sorry, this is really childish of me, that I can control who is on the big screen. <laughs> so for that, we had Michael just licking his lips constantly <laughs> while the cat, uh, Callum was talking. Oh, cheers. Thanks. Sorry, <laughs> sorry I, I, I was wondering, because I've been on the big screen the whole time, and I, I was quite sort of unnerved by it. Uh, Michael, we're, we're on you on the big screen now. Uh, Sea Moon, I must admit, Sea Moon, I haven't backed, but I am kind of running a bit scared now. I really think this horse has got a really good chance. Yeah, I am moderately terrified 
about <laughs> I might have to put a little saver on this horse because he uh, basically what Callum said this horse has run really well he's sneaked along he's run really well this year and the extra distance should, should suit in my opinion and I would be pretty worried now I think this horse has got a really good chance and there are a few um, Australians I've been talking to who think likewise so Sea Moon if I I would I would be with you if you say I'm backing him yeah uh, I. I I, I pretty much agree with everything that's been said. I, I do think he's the best horse in the race. Uh, it's just whether he can get the extra trip, which should really be no problem to him. Uh, I always thought he was a bit of a stayer in England, actually. But he can't, he's come over here. He's got a blinding chance in what looks a, an average Melbourne Cup, for me, anyway. But, yeah, I think seaman has got a decent chance. It's just anything can happen in the Melbourne Cup with 24 runners. But if, if he gets a clear path, then he should uh, have a solid chance. And uh, we'll move on to number five in the race card, and one that uh, a certain Michael Owen will be cheering home, Brown Panther, his horse that he's bred and owns. Brown Panther. Absolute dude. <laughs> and Brown Panther is Sir Scatman. Sir Scatman. You have that Brown Panther. Easy. Which is not a bad thing in my books. I think Bl uh, Brown Panther's got a really good chance. Uh, Michael, since you're on the big screen, Brown Panther? Uh, this is him and Sea Moon are the two I haven't backed and the two I'm most afraid of. I can see Brown Panther running weird, really well. I just can't quite put him put him in my top three. But, I, yeah, again, I wouldn't be putting off people who are backing him. They were pretty confident at the yard. This horse demolished... Um, uh, Brockwell, his stable mate, uh, on the on the gallops, they give him a ten uh, length head start, and in the at the end of about a seven furlong gallop, he's ahead of him. This horse has got speed. I wouldn't be worried about that. He sits just off the pace. He could kick um, from with about 200, 400 meters to go possibly, and they may not catch him. That'd be my worry, especially the ones coming from the back. So yeah, him and Sea Moon would be my two. I haven't backed yet, but I may have to. Yeah, uh, me and Adam actually saw him at Goodwood, behind the mighty Grandeur. Uh, and that was over a mile and one. And so it was a trip too short, but he did show some really good speed that day. And uh, Adam, returning for home, it's a long way, to, it's a long it's a long trip, well, a long home straight at Goodwood. But yeah, we thought, thought he had given the, the field a slip, because we thought yeah, that he would do nothing but stay, and the, the field had quite a bit to do. Um, two and a half hour, we actually thought he was going to win. That's how, yeah. that's how much of a slip we thought he'd given them, because... To be fair, that day he needed the run because after his um, after the, when they were going to go for the Irish Ledger, but unfortunately he what he had a virus I think and he wasn't eating up. So to come off that and run as well as he did at Goodwood, he has to have a big chance tomorrow. And he is one that I re he's in. I'd have him in the first four. Yeah. For me anyway. Won the Goodwood Cup, beaten Azima, one of the most consistent horses in training this season. Until last time. Until last, Until last time, time when I backed it. The ground was too soft. <laughs> um, and you go back to his days, he was second in the St. Ledger, and I just really think he's got a big chance, and I see him in the first four tomorrow. Um, yeah, so good luck to Michael Owen and connections out there. Yeah, uh, well, there's a bit of a weird story about Brown Panther with, with the travelling head lad or something breaching yeah, quarantine uh, rules. Yeah. I met him. Uh, he's a really, really nice guy. But um, there's uh, there's a rumour that possibly he um, may have uh, had a bit too much to drink. And being a wee um, Brit, he couldn't handle the Aussie drink. <laughs> so he got a bit excited and jumped a few fences. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, was, it was definitely a weird story to, to wake up to. But uh, Callum, Brown Panther, any chance? Well, I, th I think it's a good time to state that I'm on at 40 to 1, so... Very Yay! good chance. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> yeah, I, I think he's got... Where did you back uh, That's about two question. weeks ago, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Two yeah, Jesus. set 3, 6, 5, we're going 40 to 1, so... Um, yeah, massive chance. Uh, I really like the draw. The draw's been very kind to him in 5, and uh, there's, a, there's a good bit of pace uh, out, out wide, and... Um, you know they 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 won't mess about in this race I don't think and he'll just sit really nicely off the pace he's got the speed to to would deal a, a Melbourne Cup and he's got the stamina I mean he showed that when he won the the Goodwood Cup when he beat Azima in a race that was might work out quite similarly to how 
the Melbourne Cup will tomorrow. Um, he goes on any ground. I think he's absolutely bomb-proof, um, and he's my strongest. I think he's got the best chance of any of the UK runners, without without doubt. Yeah, um, we we have we have a, a betting market through. Ooh. On on a specialist, <laughs> a specialist, uh, a specialist market actually. Um, we are we are betting on what Adam's nap will be. Okay. And Dan Munn, thank you, Dan. You owe me twenty pounds still from Outstrip. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with a market, uh, right? Um, bet R us have chalked up the web nap. Okay. Six six to four C Moon. Okay. Nine to four Simonon. Okay. Eleven to four Verima. Mm. Five to one Bar. He'll never tip Verima. Chances, Chances of his winning. Of winning. <laughs> Don't 28, touch Simonon. 28 to 1. <laughs> I'm not touching Simonon. Don't worry. I'm not touching Or Simonon. Mass Marvel. Oh, no, I'm not touching Mass Marvel either. Or Brown Panther. Oh, yeah, Brown Panther. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Okay. You're not allowed to Are you gonna, Basically, you're going to basically you're gonna name the whole field that I can't... You give me about six horses I can name. Oh, yeah, you're not allowed my two as well. Tip Mount Athos, please. You really want me to... <laughs> Don't tip Mount Athos. Right, you. Yeah. Um, right. Thank, thank you for that market, Dan. Uh, we will. I, I'm. I'm. Well, I'm. I'm definitely laying the twenty-eight to one in it winning. Uh, <laughs> the next horse for Miss Gay Waterhouse, Fiorenti. Fiorenti, and uh, the person who has got it is MP underscore hash, uh, horse racing. That's Mads, which isn't it? is Mads. Yes. Mads. So Mads got the favourite for your yeah. God damn it, Mads. <laughs> uh, and now would be a good chance to mention that I backed Fiorenti at 40 to 1. Last year. Last year. <laughs> <laughs> each way I backed Fiorenti. Oh, that's okay, that's okay. Yeah, I, I, got, I, I got it each way. So my, I think, pound each way on Fiorenti went miles. And... Uh, uh, Forty to one was a good price. Uh, Thirteen to two, not such a good price, but is a, not undoubtedly a classy horse uh, over here. It was just probably a bit short of top class, but it seems to have reveled in it since he's gone over to uh, Australia. Um, uh, Michael, what do you think of uh, Fiorenti's uh, chance tonight? Yes, this is pro probably the you know he's obviously favourite. He's a worthy favourite in my opinion. He's done nothing wrong all year. Uh, the only the only question I'd have possibly he's had quite a busy campaign. Um, maybe that won't be to his advantage. I know the uh, Australians do like to run their horses, you know, quite close to the Melbourne Cup. A few uh, I heard once that uh, if you didn't run on the Saturday before the uh, the race was run, they never thought you could win it. Um, but uh, Fiorente's got still got a good chance, deserves favouritism, and gets a good draw. He's drawn five, which I think was the draw they really wanted. So. You can't put him out. I think if it's run at a better clip as well, he'll have a better chance because that's what kind yeah. of uh, uh, messed him up. Well, not messed him up. He still got. He was still placed. Yeah. Um, that's what possibly lost him the race last year. Otherwise, he possibly would have won it. Yeah, as I, I think last year it was just the case that uh, Green Moon got first run on him, turning for him. Uh, whether well, he, he would have won it if he had had maybe a clearer passage. But I, I do think he's got a cracking chance today. Uh, Callum, have, have you got any? Exotic prices on this one? Unfortunately not, and I'm very worried about him. I think he definitely, <laughs> he definitely deserves to be favourite. I mean, he, he there's absolute there's so little to oppose him on. He was second last year, obviously, so he stays. He's been running really good races uh, last time out when he's only beaten half a length in the Cox Plate, and before that in the Turnbull. Again, he's just been running out of his skin. Gay Waterhouse has never won the race. That's the only possible negative and it's amazing to think she hasn't won the race and the closest she came with with this one last year uh, he's much bigger stronger apparently according to his trainer uh, he's really thriving and um, yeah I the only thing I'd put, be put off is the price I think he's fairly priced in a such a competitive race but um, massive chance yeah well, Gay Waterhouse has just bought the, uh, Bonfire for ridiculous pounds next year's Melbourne Cup but no <laughs> Yeah, if the Melbourne Cup was run over about so. five furlongs, maybe. If Melbourne Cup stayed in the stable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Adam, Fiorenti. He's got every chance. And everything said here I agree with. Um, he's got a very good draw as well. Um, he's, I think out of the Aussies, he's got the best chance. 
and he deserves to be favourite on everything he's done. The running of the Cox Plate was fantastic over a trip that's far from short. He's got every chance. Yes. All I can really enough. say. <laughs> Fair enough. Everything's been said, so I can't really say anything much more. Uh, the next one, another Australian horse, uh, Fortella. Yeah, good luck whoever gets this one. <laughs> it's price uh, 20 to 1. Oh, it is Mr. Pistachio95. What, a, what a brilliant name. <laughs> I love that. What a brilliant name. Well done, Mr. Pistachio95. That is a brilliant Twitter His name. His real right name is Simon. <laughs> That's not as good. <laughs> That's not as good. Plus five for the username, minus one yeah, for the real well name. Yeah, well done. Yeah, plus four overall. Um, uh, Callum, Fortella, anything on this one? Yeah, he's, um, uh, his best is at a mile to ten furlongs. That's where his best form is. So it's just whether he stays the trip. Yeah, I think he's got a decent chance if he stays. If if the jockey can hold him up, um, and just and really you know just keep him together, and he's there in the finish, then I think he's got a really good chance. But I mean, his best form is like I said, from eight furlongs to a mile. So he's got the trip to really prove. He's he's only tried twelve furlongs once on soft ground. Uh, and he, he ran it on OK, but um, I think more will convince in a finish. But if he's there at the home turn, then do not do not dismiss him. Yeah, well, it's, he was uh, second behind Atlantic Jewel, wasn't he? Yeah, he yeah. was. He was meant to be the superstar in Australia, but yeah, we won't get to see Atlantic Jewel. I, I think he's been retired now, hasn't it? Yeah, injured. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Adam Fortella, what do well, you? Make of this yeah, one's chances. As, as Callum said, the trip could be an issue, but in the Cox Plate, he was nearest at the finish. So, and if they do, ho well, obviously he is a hold-up horse, so he has got every chance to get in the trip with the way the race is run. So, twenty to one could be a big. If he comes on the bend and he's absolutely cruising, and the, and he's going to kick, he's going to kick on, and the twenty to one would look big, but he's twenty-eight. I mean, twenty-eight, but he is not one that I'd have in the first four. Yeah. Honest opinion, I couldn't have him in the first four. Yeah, well, we'll move on to another one that we will all know much about and uh, was favourite for some time, and I believe Adam's actually backed it. Anti post, Dan I'd like to add. Anti post. Anti post. We'll, we'll find out what price in a second. Uh, Dan Dino is going to be awarded to my. Dan Dino has got. <laughs> um. <laughs> The Slippery Duke. Oh. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> that was right, so Luke, bad. Luke's lost his professionalism. Um, right, my brother is... about Dandino. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> Uh, the sli uh, Dandino, the Slippery Duke, that is your horse. Um, Dandino has got a really good chance. I really I really like this horse. I fancied him for the Caulfield Cup immensely. So annoyed when he didn't quite get there. Um, but my question is the distance. On the other hand, though, the Australian's two mile is, and the way the race is run, particularly last year, it could suit him. As, but he needs to be a bit closer in my mind. He's still going to have to charge home. He might end up being a Mount Athos of last year. So I wouldn't... Uh, yeah, I probably would put you off backing him. I, I think <laughs> he, he needs a bit shorter and he needs to be closer and I don't think that's the way he likes to, be, he likes to run. So that would be my worry, really. But I, I could... I have said I didn't think he would get the distance, but his, lonely, his last uh, run at this was over uh, 3,200 3, metres, two miles, was um, in the as, behind opinion poll, I think it was the Ascot Gold Cup last year, um, and you can kind of forgive that run. And I think on the ground at, in Australia he might stay, but I don't he's think gonna, he's. Gonna I don't. I don't think he's going to get home. He's not going to get home in front because he won't get there in time because he comes from too far behind, basically. Yeah, well, he's got the man. I, I'd say at the moment, but it seems of every moment uh, on board is uh, Ryan Moore's riding, and. Uh, We'll, we'll 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 save a joke for a second as uh, we we go to Callum instead first, and we'll, we'll keep uh, Adam waiting. Yeah, fair play to Adam for getting uh, twenty five to one or whatever he did get. Um, but um, yeah, I think he's quite poor price now, to be honest. I don't particularly fancy him. The time to catch him was in the Caulfield Cup when he ran an absolute screamer. Uh, Faulkner just got an easier run 
going around the turn. He had to go about six or seven wide. And he was unlucky not to win that day, I thought. But it's his stamina that really is the worry. I mean, he, he did win at Arlington before that in the American St. Ledger, but it's a weak race. And he's shown that he doesn't hasn't particularly stayed two miles that well when he, he ran at York and he was well beaten in the ledger. It's just not his trip and he was trained to the to the minute to run in that Caulfield Cup. That was his big race. And I think this is a bit of an yeah. afterthought. So I don't fancy him at the prices at all. Yeah, well it's uh I was, I was watching at the race earlier. Matt Chapman said that he did well said to Marco Botti that he did everything but win it. And he, you can't deny that he ran an awesome race in the Caulfield Cup but like Callum says, it, this might just be an afterthought, and he could struggle in this. Now, on to Adam, who has been chomping at the bits all about this horse, and Ryan Moore annoyed you the other day when catching the Fugal Magician. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Dandino, can Ryan, Ryan Moore, Moore can Ryan Moore get back in your good books? Yes, I think he can, but I I respect these two and what they're saying that he could be too far back. The Corville Cup was his race. I, I backed him. In between the American Ledger and the Caulfield Cup, because I saw he was at 25, and I thought that's a price that if he does run well in the Caulfield Cup, he'll obviously be shorter on the day for the Melbourne Cup. Um, the reason I backed him was based on his American Ledger, where he just showed that speed, but you, it was such a quick turn of foot, and it was so impressive. Um, I think that he'll use the turn of foot tomorrow to his advantage. I mean, as Michael rightly said, he has to be ridden closer, which I think Ryan Moore will do. Um, good news for those of you who think I'm going to nap him. No, I am not going to nap him because that will be cursing his chance for tomorrow and these three will all be sat with big wry grins on their faces like Cheshire cats. What's so, the curse of the nap? I am not going to nap him. I am not napping Dandino. So anyone who's backed him, breathe a sigh of relief. Something has to make me laugh. Something has to make me laugh at four o'clock in the morning. Something will make you laugh at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I can guarantee it. And it'll probably it'll be, be Dandino It'll be last. when yeah. It'll be or when Dandino absolutely bolts up and you threw away another chance for winning that. Well, I'm not going to complain with that because I'll have I'll have well I've backed him already and I mean I've had another bet which I'll disclose later on yeah. and that will be my nap. But I'm not telling you just yet. Uh, yeah, I think he's got a winning chance. But he has to be ridden closer to the pace, and I think he will get the trip like, with the way the Melbourne Cup is run. Yeah. So, uh, Scandino is my main selection. We'll, move, my back, my we'll move fourth to the Australian horse, Ethiopia. Oh, God. <laughs> don't, Ooh, be me, don't 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 be me. Where, where is Luke's name, actually? <laughs> <laughs> if you dare. <laughs> no, I will, I will pick it fairly. Okay. The answer is... Oh dear, we're going to be in trouble. Tom, what about you? <laughs> Sorry, Tom. I, I always say it, Tom Woobie, because it's more fun. I said, <laughs> what about you? Yeah. Um, Adam, you, you, can, you can talk I'm about sorry, Tom's I'm horse. sorry, I'm sorry. You, you can talk about Tom's horse first. Okay. He was last in this a year ago. And unfortunately, I don't see him improving too much. Okay, he ran well last time out behind, it was three days ago, behind Rosciello, but most of his form is not that inspiring. He's not one that I'd want to be on. Good luck with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Callum? Yeah, he's an Australian derby winner, but he, like Adam said, last, last in it last year. Uh, from the same draw, ironically, uh, did run a good race in the Lexus, but um, he's not good enough to be winning. Yeah, and uh, Michael just uh, put the finishing gloss on uh, Ethiopia's chances. That's that's fair enough. Uh, yeah, I, I think he, I think he's got a nice chance. Um, Michael, next, please, with Faulkner. Uh, Hawkner, who won a race recently, I believe. Yep. The answer to Hawkner's wishes is... You can't quite see it. It's yellow, but it's Sam Preen. That's not bad. Why'd you print it in yellow? Well, I was running out of colours. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. You can't fault that. Uh, Callum, Faulkner. Oh, Faulkner, sorry, not Faulkner. If, if he lasted home, and he's got a good chance. I mean, he did improve a good deal to win there. 
uh, to win the Caulfield Cup last time out on his first try at 12 furlongs. Um, not particularly pleased with his breeding in terms of staying further. Um, so if, if again, if the jockey can keep him together, turn him for home, and he can quicken, then he's got a, a squeak. But I think Hickmott Williams clan have got better chances. Yeah, uh, this, I read somewhere earlier that he was third to Black Caviar at some yes. point. Yeah, this year, that, that that form is good form, but not yeah. too over, mild. Over six, oh. over six furlongs. Yeah, yeah. a yeah. bit shorter, and it, he might have a bit more of a chance. But uh, Adam, something a bit crazy. I don't. I mean, in Australia, I find it really strange that they run horses. It's like this. He's gonna. He ran over six furlongs in March, and now he's gonna run over two miles tomorrow. In November, I'm just I don't know. You wouldn't see it over here, and it's just. Well, like Declaration crazy. of War was thought about. Well, yeah, well, Declaration of War is one of them. You could have won over five furlongs if you won over two miles. It's, um, I don't think I may say that about good horses though. It's like they, if they can win over, if they can win a what was it? The, I don't know what I was talking about. It's like a good mile and a half horse, like say like Trev, could go back in distance easily and win say over a mile. That, and it, you wouldn't think it was mad because of the amount of pace that they tend yeah. to have and the stamina. <clears throat> uh, Faulkner, well, he got the best run in the co- uh, in the co- in the Caulfield Cup. Um, if he gets a trip, he has every chance, but he's not one on my radar for this race. Yeah, um, we're just an update on one of our sweepstake participants, okay. Tom Wubia. Uh, Tom Wubia has been in touch. It says, thanks guys, my alarm has just been cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a fair analysis. Of, if he uh, wins now, you get the free bet still, so... Yeah. <laughs> you have to be you'd in it effect- to win it. Yeah, you'd, you'd have effectively got a 10 to 1, uh, a 6, six to 1 winner and been rewarded with 10 to 1. <laughs> <laughs> nice free bet right there. Um, moving on. And Faulkner's not for me. The breeding is a is a worry, and he he won the Caulfield, but n- not the Melbourne Cup, I don't think. Yeah. Um. Now, now, my name, Michael's name, and Adam's name is still in the hat. Moraine is 150 to one, <laughs> and seemingly has very little chance. He was seven fingers a year ago. Yeah, I don't see why he's 150s. His form has tailed off a bit. But he, well, four starts ago, he won the Sydney Cup yeah. over two miles. Well, let's, uh, Michael. Yeah. Do the. Uh, uh, if my name comes ooh, back. I just saw Luke Elder. <laughs> I'm here. Hi. The answer is. JR, the UK tipster. Unlucky, mate. <laughs> JR, the oh, UK tipster. Right. Let's put your tipping on the line. If if you if you're watching this live, then please tweet us with uh, what chance you think Moraine's got. Michael, what chance has Moraine got? Little. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I wouldn't be at board Moraine. I can't really uh, say I would be, and I don't. I look elsewhere. I think there's much more exciting um, horses in the race, and Moraine's just uh, on the basis of it making up the numbers. Yeah, and uh, Callum. You sort of didn't dismiss him. Well, I, 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 I don't think he wins, but I don't think he should be a 150 to one shot because it's not like he ran poorly last year. He ran a really good race last year off uh, two pound higher, and he won the Sydney Cup. And the uh, connection said he's ready for two miles. I, he's the, they're outsider, but uh, he won't be winning. But he, he's not 150 to one. He's more of a 66 to one shot. Well, if you have a quid on each way at 150 to one, and he hits the board then. Yeah, to place no, maybe. I had a couple of to place. Let's not forget, he ran in with 2,009 cent ledger as well when he was fifth behind Mastery. So. Yeah. Well, English form on the line. And was placed quite three times behind Fame and Glory as well. And second to see the stars as a two year old. So, as a two year old. As a two year old, yeah, as still, a two year old. Yeah, the form's, the form's in the book. He's a certainty at 150 to 1. <laughs> Five years ago, no. Uh, we'll move on to the next, and this will mark our halfway through the card, one that we should know a bit about from a few years ago, Sir Phil. Uh, and the horse, the, in fact, the person. <laughs> you're, not, you're not very good at that, are you? I haven't, I haven't got this quite right. 
Mate, uh, us is Sport Mad Twit. So that is Sammy. Sport Mad Twit. Apparently Sammy. I've I've been told by Michael. Yeah, Seville. And he wouldn't do without a chance, would he, Michael? Uh, no, there's a lot of talk about him in in uh, Australia at the moment. The horse, the form doesn't really bode extremely well for a Melbourne Cup horse. But from what I've been hearing, there are a few people who are running a little bit scared. He's a popular horse down under, and yeah, I'd be interested in his chances. I wouldn't say on the form you could, you know, back him and go all hands in. But he's been running pretty well. Um, his base win was in the Group One Metropolitan um, in on the fifth of August. 5th of October, in fact, um, and he's a Group 1 performer, but is he a Melbourne Cup horse yeah, over this distance? That's the question. Yeah, and uh, Callum? He's one of my four, actually. I do I do fancy him quite a lot. Um, yeah, he was obviously trained by Aidan O'Brien when he was over here. He was fourth in the ledger where the, the first four are, are all running, but he was close to a ridiculously strong pace that day. Um, I mean, they, it, was rec- it was a record time in on a on a race that was run on very fast ground, he's coming to form again over here. I think he's he ran a good race. We well, won the Metropolitan. He ran a good race in the Cox Plate last time out, finishing best of the uh, Hickmott Trio. Um, yeah, I, there's there's a lot of buzz about this horse, and I can see exactly why. I think he's really, really, really looking forward to seeing him over two miles. I think you'll we'll see a good horse tomorrow. Yeah, well, the uh, owner's got a few horses in the race, and there's one it before, hasn't he? Uh, <laughs> But it's got a few horses. When I say a few, I mean practically half the field. Six. <laughs> practically half the field. Like we'll call him JP McManus. Just <laughs> the Australian. We'll, we'll yeah. call him JP. Yeah, the, the Australian JP. But it's probably totally one of his leading chances, isn't he, Adam? Yeah, you can say that. I mean, some of his British form was pretty solid. When and Irish form as well. I mean, he was second in the Irish Derby to Treasure Beach. Second in the Grand Prix de Paris behind Meandre, and. Looking at some of the Australian form, I mean, some of it is mixed. I mean, he was second to Green Moon, who then went on and won the Melbourne Cup last year in the Turnbull Stakes. Uh, he won two starts back, as Michael rightly said, and was running on in the Cox Plate. I can I can give him a chance and being in my first six. Um, and he'll like the ground as well, so he's got every chance. Yeah, and uh, we'll move on to a horse that I would love to get. Super cool. <laughs> that would be a bit. That would be uh, not very topical. Uh, not very topical. <laughs> let's see. I know who I hope gets it. <laughs> I know who me and Callum would get it as well. Uh, no, it is on Harbour Watch. Damn it, on Harbour Watch. We wanted it to be Adam because then I could yeah, say we're that's an oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> we had it planned oh, and everything. On. <laughs> I mean, one thing, Harbour Watch wouldn't be winning this race. <laughs> um, oh, he likes the horse. But he still wouldn't win a Melbourne Cup. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Adam, we'll go. We'll go from the uh, the least cool to the coolest in this one. And Adam, you. Does that mean you're going to speak last on this horse's chances? I will reveal nothing. Okay then. <laughs> um. He was a number that also ran well in the Cox Plate. I mean, there's quite a few that were in behind that ran well. I mean, Side Glance has come out and won. It's another thing to mention. Um, the trip is an issue for me, especially with the si- uh, on the Sire side. I um, can't really say very much apart from that. I mean, he's, he's got some good form. I mean, he won the Austra- uh, Dali Australian Cup uh, earlier this year. But... I, it's not for me. I'll be honest, not for me. Yeah, uh, Callum. He's by far Snet Rock. He's not going to win a race over two miles, never mind a Melbourne Cup. No chance. Thank you very much. <laughs> Michael. Oh, damn it, I forgot to go from cool it. So least Michael's cool to cooler than Callum. Right, I get it now, that's fine. I forgot to go from <laughs> least cool to coolest. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I went from left Callum, to right. Favoritism. 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 I went I'll, from I'll left just, to I'll right. Just, I'll just wait for you then, Luke. Well, you're on the big screen. You're on the big screen now, and I ain't clicking on mine. <laughs> uh, I can't really add anything. The horse will pretty much not stay, in my opinion. Not pretty much. He won't stay. So yeah, next please. Yeah, uh, I, I, I copy that sentence. Uh, now on to 
someone that some would argue Adam looks best at, uh, like a uh, masked marvel. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm badass. And the person is Hillblade1889. God, he was born a long time ago. Um, <laughs> 1889. I actually thought you were going to yeah. throw the number out then. <laughs> yeah. What, like uh, 1066? Yeah, something like that. That's what I was thinking then. Okay. Uh, Callum, you really like Mask Marvel, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, yeah. I, I, he's, he's the third of my four fancies. Um, obviously a Ledger winner for John Gosden in uh, 2011, in that Ledger, which I've mentioned like four times already uh, tonight. Yes. He, went, he went off the boil last season, but He's maybe just starting to come to form over in Australia. He ran two good races at Randwick. The second one he totally threw away by hanging badly left. And he ran quite a good race in the Cox Plate, I thought. I mean, he was well beaten, but he had to come seven wide. And he actually quickened quite nicely, but just didn't finish his race. He's begging for two miles. Uh, fast ground is absolutely ideal for him. Um, he's a very, very lively outsider from a good draw. Yeah. It's, uh, he's, he's definitely one of my bets, and 33 to 1 is way too big about him yeah. for me. But uh, they, they say that the draw bigger, well, the, the bigger you're drawn, the, le the less chance you have. But could it be that drawn stool number two, uh, it is, could, um, well, he might get uh, caught behind a wall of horses, Adam? He could be caught behind a wall of horses. I mean, he likes to be held up like he was when he did win the ledger. Um, he can come off a pace, which is what you want in the Melbourne Cup. Uh, but yeah, the, the main worry would be for me is whether he gets trapped behind a wall of horses. That's the only real worry I've got. And I could see him running into the first six. If he, that's if he gets a clear run, that is. Because it's him and Gunner then on the inside that I'd be worried about. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll go to Michael, who I, has, I, I've heard some writing <laughs> no, no, no. Um, oh. I was just looking at the, looking at the stats in the last thirty years. There has been two winners um, from Barrier Draw Number Two: Might and Power in nineteen ninety seven, and Kiwi in, eight, in 1983. Um So I wouldn't be put off completely with that. Um, the draw, though, there are a few pretty big, bigger uh, uh, draws that horses that have won it before. I'll go into that later anyway. Um, I wouldn't be putting you off backing him, and I could definitely see him in the first eight or so. He's just he just hasn't got that kind of edge for me to back him. I just I I won't be backing him, but I would be not surprised whatsoever if he came out home in front. Yeah, well most people remember him for his run his runs over what winning the St. Ledger obviously over here. Yeah. But would you think would would it be fair to say that he lost his way over here when we uh, last saw him? Uh yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I thought someone else was going to answer that, so I left it. Any, yeah, it, it was to anyone, but thanks for leaving me hanging, guys. <laughs> I said, you, yeah. You all suck. <laughs> I'm too hurt, so we'll go on to Mount Athos. <laughs> who, Who's praying for this? Who Who's I I, I I want, and if if I was Dr. Marwan Kukash, run him in the Neptune. <laughs> <laughs> oh, We've said this numerous times. Run him in the Neptune. And Run him in the bloody Neptune. Yeah, uh, Mike Athos. Albert Athos. I, I, I understand why he's second favourite person. Luke, 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 Luke. What about Luke? The answer is Chris Hallworth. God damn it, Chris Hallworth. Has Luke uh, backed Mount Athos? I haven't oh, backed Mount Athos. Oh, oh, I actually God. haven't. No, Not yet. Uh, but I, I I backed him last year and was cursing my, my luck when he came about 50 wide <laughs> straight, then got a bump, and then absolutely flew home under a certain Mr. Moore. Um, Ryan Moore said that it probably wasn't his best ride that day. I, I'm not going to say that it, it wasn't, but I, he, he ran probably as well as a winner would, but it was annoying last year. And still 22 is less than ideal, but... For me, I just think he's such a classy horse. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kamani has openly slated his jockey over this one, which is why he, which is why he uh, resorts to putting Craig Williams on board, who uh, who missed out the ride on Gina Den a few years ago. But James Spencer's on uh, Gina Den this year. Craig Williams takes the rides on Mount Athos. 
Oh, right, yes, Craig Williams. Uh, Callum, Man Athos, am I crazy to be uh, fancying him? No, I, he's, he's an obvious chance. I mean, I backed him last year as well and finished. he finished like an absolute train. Yeah. Um, the draw, massive worry, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he just he needs to get a bit of cover, but he stays well. He's got he loves his fast ground. His fast ground is absolutely key to him. So, um, and he's with the same weight as he got last year. Uh, I think he's got a good chance. And I, no disrespect to Ryan Moore at all, is one of the best jockeys in the world. But having Craig Williams on in a race like this is a massive positive. Um, but I, there's others I prefer at the prices with the draw. Yeah, uh, Adam. Yeah, the draw. The draw. The draw is a major worry for me. <laughs> the draw. Uh, the draw. <laughs> was that an attempt at straight? No, it wasn't actually. I've already thrown my attempt at it. Uh, no, the draw is just the major worry for Did me. Did you say you've already thrown your attempt in? Yes. Lies. Guys, Lies. did you guys did you realise this? What? No. That uh, Adam's already tried his Australian accent. Yeah. God. <laughs> God was it, was it in English? It out. No. Well, okay. Mount Athos. He was, as these two have rightly said, he was so unlucky in this a year ago when he flew home. Um, he came out at the beginning of this year and he beat Mad Moose at Chester. And Mad Moose runs tomorrow, and good luck to Mad Moose. Um, Wait, does he run tomorrow? Or well, well, I say he runs. well he's entered tomorrow. Whether yeah, he okay. starts, I think that's question. more apt. Yeah, I'll say that. Um, he has. Well, Craig Williams is probably the right jockey for him. Uh, I'm just worried, as I said, about the draw. And also, because he's drawn 22, he's going to be so many wide coming into the straight again. And you need... you need There's so much luck in this race. And I'm not sure whether Matt Athos will get the luck that he needs to win. Yeah. Uh, Michael? Um, just just uh, to put you guys into context and viewers, there's actually a fire going on at Flemington at the moment. Yeah. Uh, so the race course is uh, interesting. Right. I've just seen a few pictures, and uh, so I hope everything's okay there. I can't quite see what's uh, going yeah. on, but there's a, few, uh, there's a few fire engines involved. Uh, anyway, back to Mount Athos. I believe I read a tweet by Marwan Kukash, or a quote from Marwan Kukash, saying, um, I'm not worried about the draw. The draw. Um, all the other horses from stall 18 were probably shit horses anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's quote of the year. Uh, uh, I like so, it even more. Fair play to him. Uh, into stats mode, are there any horses that have actually won it in the last 30 years? The answer is from stall 22. Yes, Brew won it in 2000. So that's the widest draw for a while. In fact, for the last 30 years. So it's possible if he's a good enough horse, but I don't think his running style really suits this race, and he hasn't been running that well this year. Although, I am interested from his last run, obviously, that is a really good run. Harris Tweed, everybody knows how much I love that horse. Harris Tweed would not give up that day. Mount Athos could do nothing to get past him. Yeah. wouldn't let him by. Um, so that was that must that run must be taken well. Obviously, there's a few winners in behind as well. I think Camborne was in behind amongst others. So I think he could be peaking at the right time. He ran pretty poorly for the rest of the year, and you can't really count his nine-length defeat of Mad Moose uh, uh, with too much uh, with too much uh, strength. Uh, but I think he might be peaking at the right time. He's got a, he's he's not got a bad chance, but I wouldn't have him at seven to one. I, I think the prices are a bit. Ridiculous down there. It's, it's about ten to one in places, which is a bit more fair. Uh, okay, that that's better. But I'd still prefer him. Yeah. I I'd back him if it was say twenty fives, but I'm not on at that oh, price. You don't want much, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I want double the price and then some. <laughs> um, double than the half. Yeah, exactly. I'd like to. Let's see, Albert Maker. Um, that that was Chris Hallworth that had that, wasn't it? Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he he's tweeted in. Watching live, I guess. Uh, could be worse, but isn't my pick. Not impressed this season and a bad draw. Which not impressed this season. I, I think that's a bit harsh. Some of the rides he's been given, though, I can see. Hardwick, he made I'm a not. lot. He made heavy weather of it. I know he didn't win, but he made heavy weather of how he ran though that day. Yormandy was impressive. I'll give him that. Yeah, you could question what he beat that day. I mean, Mad Moose is a very good horse in his own right, but 
Yeah, I, th- I think that's a bit harsh to say he's been unimpressive this year. I think he's just been aimed at one particular race, and he's won races this year. And like uh, one, Michael one mentioned, race. well, yeah, <laughs> but like Michael mentioned, Harris Tweed, nothing would have got past him. He could have been the best horse in the world, and Harris Tweed. Just like the form. He, he was second yeah. to Royal Diamond, yeah. So and that was over a trip that maybe was too far for Harris Tweed. So. Yeah, I wish I had Mount Athos. Uh, we'll move on to the Godolphin representative. Karen McElboy takes the ride on Royal Empire, who we had a lengthy debate about beforehand. They you ready uh, to become the first cult to win this since 1941. Here we go. Uh, for the cult, then, with Royal Empire, the person aboard that, well, it won't be aboard, but he I will be on him, is the odds on Jolly. He has not got an odds on Jolly here. No. Royal Empire is 20 to 1. Uh, Michael, you quite like his chances a little bit, I think. I do quite like this horse's chances. I've really been impressed this year. He probably res- represents the best um, horse for Godolphin over the last 14 years, and they've not done bad in it, considering our awful record, uh, the British ourselves. Um, they've had four placings in the last... 14 years, I think, in Saeed bin Sarur. I think I just read a quote saying that um, he believes this is his best chance in the last 14 years. So I think he's got a really good chance. I am on him at 33 to 1, I think. Um, he's come down in price now, but um, I, I do like this horse, and there's quite a few uh, optimistic uh, other backers around. So I would not be putting you off him whatsoever, and he's in my top three or four, I suppose. Um, yeah. He's going to run well, and I'm I'm really looking forward to him stepping up in trip because he does take a while to get going. But I would like him again. I'd like all my horses to just sit off the pace. I think that's how you win a Melbourne Cup, particularly um, last year's race. Uh, so I'm I am looking forward to him running, and I will be definitely on Team Royal Empire. Yeah, I I I think you touched on the right bit there, where he's saying he stepped up in trip. Uh, will play right into his hands. But we were talking a bit before, he takes a little while to get going. Whether that would be different over this trip, we will find out later. But Callum, you, you still weren't too keen on him. Yeah, it's the exact reason. I just think he takes a lot of winding up, and um, I don't think that'll suit him. I think you'll really get caught out when they turn for home, especially if they go slow. If they go slow and they have to quicken, I don't think he's the one to quicken and he can get caught out. But good often have got a good record in the race. They've had place runners with Central Park, give the slip, beekeeper, crime scene a couple of years ago, uh, three years ago, four years ago maybe, um, but yeah, he's been good in, he's been in good form, he gets good ground, he's got a good draw, but um, I really think he'll get caught out when it matters in this. Yeah, uh, Adam? I like him, I think he's <laughs> I like thing. him. I do like the horse. <laughs> uh, as Callum says, he does take some winding up, which I can, which makes me think they'll ride him closer to the pace than they normally would. Uh, he ran well behind Secret Number at uh, Ascot last time out, and I actually think that the Secret Number could be their Melbourne Cup horse next season. I really like Secret Number. Uh, he will need to, because to face we will need winding up, and if he is, then he has an each way squeak. But I have to respect that. I, I know Luke, you're not a stats person, but you've got. To, I've got to respect the stat that a colt has not won this in over 60 years. So. 70 years, actually, yeah. 72 years, yeah. So, he's got a chance, but he's not my, he wouldn't be my number one. Yeah, Mike. God, I hate trends so much. <laughs> <laughs> if a horse is good enough, he'll win a race. Yeah, okay. How if a horse is good it. enough, he will win a race. Okay, whether Royal Empire is good enough, we'll find out later. Uh, moving on. The Irish St. Ledger winner follows Dacours. So, Valeur de Coeur. <laughs> oh, interesting. The Stealer of Hearts, I think it translates to, or the Thief of Hearts. Well, it's not true about this one. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Love Valeur de Coeur. <laughs> oh. I should probably start us off with this one. Yeah, <laughs> the Stealer of Hearts. How you doing? <laughs> um, 
I was impressed with Volos de Kurs in the Irish St. Ledger. Uh, beat Arzima, who we touched on earlier, as the most consistent horse of the season. Whether the inexperience might play a little factor here, it's not the hasn't run the most times, but wouldn't be without a chance. It showed a really strong staying attitude uh, that day with, with Michael Moroni now uh, in Australia after being with Dermot Weld, and the name completely escapes me. Who did uh, the Dermot Weld win it in '93 with? Media 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 oh yeah, Vintage Crop. That's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. Uh, so. He knows how to prepare one for a Melbourne Cup, and Volos de Coz, I'm not unhappy with that in the sweepstake, and I, w- I will be looking forward to getting five pounds off both Michael and Adam. Can I go <laughs> next? Because I want to completely shun what Lucas just said, because... Dermot okay, yeah, we'll Weld. go to Callum. Oh, you're going to use my quote. <laughs> go on, we're, we're probably all going go to go say the same thing. We're going to say the same thing. Yeah. Derma Well did not want to run this horse there this year in the Melbourne Cup. He said she wasn't ready. And then the owner has sold the horse to go to Australia. Derma Weld is not daft. I'm not, I know it seems like the most obvious statement in the world to make, but if Derma Weld doesn't want to run the horse because he thinks she's not ready, you've, I would, if I was an owner, I'd respect that. But then again, they've probably been offered a lot of money to sell the horse. So it's just one of those things. I don't think if it was next year... And maybe with a bit softer ground, yes. This year, not for me. Not in the. I, 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 sorry. You said, you, you said, you could, in, you said wait, wait, wait a second. Wait. <laughs> you said you were going to shun. Impressive. Hang about. No, I know. No. You said you were going to shun everything I just said. And I said that the inexperience is a worry. Oh, sorry, not that. Sorry, not that. Not that. <laughs> so not everything I just said. Said. You agree, said. You agree with some stuff. I agree with the inexperience bit. The only bit I didn't agree with was that you said that you felt that she would... I, she's not for me this year. And also the draw again. It's another thing. That, she's drawn 21, and that's another one out in the car park. So she's not for me. Yeah, sorry, right. Luke. She, I don't think she's going to win. Sorry. Well, whatever. If she does win, if she does win... Oh, shit, if she wins... Language. Oh, no, 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 no. I definitely don't want her to win now. Oh, I've had an idea now. Okay. If she does win, I'm taking five pounds off your ass. <laughs> and the other thing I'm worried about as well, if she wins. Oh, yeah. I get to choose a pack. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, on this video, my uh, Callum has Gina Den. I have Volos de Cools. And uh, Callum, would, would you change yours for mine? Um, probably not. Well, no, she's got she's got more of a chance than doing it, I think. But I don't fancy. Her. I think she's re- she's actually potentially one of the best handicap fillies in the race. But I don't think she. It's been an afterthought, and I don't like that. But she'll stay. I mean, she she's an Irish Zarich winner by ten lengths over two miles. But and again, I think her best form is on softer ground. I mean, she flops or she didn't run particularly well, and in the Curra Cup, I'm good to firm. I think I might be worried tomorrow, and she's poorly drawn, so there's more than enough to oppose her on. Yeah, and uh, Michael? Um, I would happily back her for next year, but German Weld said she'll need another year, and he's won it two years. None of the British have won it for two. Uh, have won it twice. They haven't even won it once between them. <laughs> and the French have won it twice in recent years. I don't think they've won it before. Obviously, America Khan and Dunedin. Um, so he's a master of this, and who are we to argue with him? So Valer de Kerr. Melbourne Cup, 2014. <laughs> you heard it here first. Although, if 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 she were to win the 2013 renewal of the race, Adam, you will be doing something hilarious next week. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, no. <laughs> See, now he's agreed to it. So I've not agreed to it. You agreed to it. You just said, you just said, you just said, you just said that you were going to be doing it. So you're doing it, mate. Uh, Hawkspur. We're talking Hawkspur. <laughs> Hawkspur. An- another for CJ Waller. Uh, the answer is Gregor31. Gregor31 Gregor 31 with Hawkspur. Whose name is Greg. Quite original, that one. Yeah, I know Greg, yeah. Okay. Right, uh, um. Michael, Hawkspur chance? Hawkspur. Um, not one of my top five or six. He's not a completely uh, not a complete outsider in my opinion, but he wouldn't be one of my top horses and I couldn't see myself backing him personally. Um, 
Oh, what have he done? What has he done this year? I'm trying to even think now. Um, what the he, he oh, I can't even find my notes. Um, it's a question over the distance, and also a fun fact. That's that's what I was trying to remember. 18 is the only stool that has never produced a Melbourne Cup winner. Jesus. Yeah, but all them runners were shit. <laughs> <laughs> Even you know, stall twenty four, etc., has produced winners, but that one has not. So I'm not. It's stats. It's just an interesting fun fact. I'm not going to put you off him just because of that. But he's not one of my top horses. Yeah, and uh, Callum, moving on to you. Yeah, Queensland Derby winner earlier this year was quite a real notable eye catcher. I thought in the in the uh, Caulfield Cup when he finished seventh, beating two and a half lengths. Um, Needs a lot of luck, and he's a hold-up horse. He's got unlucky loser written all over him, I'd say, um, from a from a wide draw. Um, but if if the breaks come for him, and I think he he'll, he'll probably just about stay. Um, he's he's not got a bad chance. Yeah, and uh, Adam, some that, that awful draw stat that Michael has just uh, whipped out. Uh, well, he was favourite for the Caulfield Cup, and he, as Callum rightly said, he did run well that day. And he is one of the Australian horses that I think could be one that would be in the first few if he gets, as Callum said, he's a hold up horse. If he gets the gaps and he runs, he, get, he gets the split, the lucky splits. He could be one that could be right there. So, and he is one that you wouldn't be as worried about getting the trip where you've got some of the others like Faulkner and. Um, another Australian horse. Um, well, you've got you've got a few, a couple of Australian horses that I can't think of the top of my head that you've got major worries about seeing out the distance. Whereas Hawksbow will be less of a worry. So I can see him running well. Yeah. Um, we'll move straight on to the next uh, and seminar. A certain Mr. Hughes takes a ride for a certain Willie Mullins on a certain seminar. Um, the certain winner is, well, I don't think this horse will be winning it, but good luck to him. Pigeon Island. Oh, for <laughs> God's sake. Well, that's mine jinxed. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, well done. Oh, Martin. He has drawn Simenon, who must have an outstanding chance. Uh, was, was initially a jumps horse for anyone Australian that might be watching. Uh, it was initially a jumps horse, and then... The hurdles got in the way, uh, which is fair to say. And then since uh, changing back to the flat has been a bit of a revelation. Was second in the Ascot Gold Cup this year, a dual winner at Royal Ascot the previous year. Uh, I think he's got a lot going for him today. Uh, Callum, you fancy him? Yeah, I he was my strongest fancy. Uh, <laughs> no, um, I think he's got a great chance. Um, he ran a cracker at Caulfield in the Herbert Power just behind Sea Moon, where he showed he's got pace to deal with with twelve furlongs. Um, before that, he was he ran a good race at, at York in the Lonsdale. Obviously, he was second to estimate in the Gold Cup. He was without a doubt he stays really well. And obviously, he was a dual Ascot winner, like Royal Ascot winner last year, like you said when he won the. Ascot Stakes and the Queen Alexandra. William Mullins is an absolute genius, uh, one of the best trainers in the world, I'd say. And um, yeah, I, he's the best chance from Ireland. <laughs> um, it's uh, it's just uh, yeah, I, he's definitely. I'm very confident. I think he's he's one of my four, um, and I think there's a big run likely. Uh, Adam, it's fascinating. It's fascinating going through Simonon's history. I really, I think he's got an each way chance. But if you look through him. He ran in the Solario Stakes when he was two. He ran in the Great Voltage when he was three. He's also ran in the November Handicap as well, where he was third to times up. Um, he's also ran in the Supreme Novice Hurdle. Uh, the, uh, the champion novice at Punch Sam, where he was third. And it, it's just, he's just one of them horses that just appears in... It just You wouldn't associate a horse in the Solario Stakes at two with the Supreme Novices at um, five or six, I think he was. Yeah, I think he was five or six. Yeah, five. Um, I give him a big each way squeak. Um, his Ascot Gold Cup run was excellent behind estimate. Uh, I didn't give him much chance at York, and he actually surprised me that day that he actually had a bit of pace, and he actually went from the front, which he actually isn't exactly 100% keen on doing. And then last time out, a good third to see Moon over a trip that's far too short of his best. Uh, he's another one that will need a, a lot of luck in running. 
And if he does get a lot of luck in running, he's drawn well in 12. And if the gaps come at the right time, he's a lot of horses, I'm saying, if the gaps come at the right time. But I think this is one of those. He will take, I do think he will take a bit of winding up, but he does have the pace to get into the race. Uh, he's an each race squeak. Third or yeah. fourth, I can see. If he won it, I wouldn't be surprised. And it would be wonderful for Willie Mullins. So, Simonon is an each race chance for me. Yeah, and it'd be nice to see the, the jumps boys stealing the Yay. flat prizes again. Uh, Michael. <laughs> Simonon. Uh, I, I would love Simonon to win, but he's not on my list. I can definitely see him running into a place, that's a possibility, but I do think there's classy horses, and I think there are more speedier horses. I know he proved he can. He's got speed, but I, I, I don't think he's got the speed in comparison to some of these. I just think he is more of a, a, a slogger. He's not a slogger in jumps terms, but in comparison to some of these horses who don't, he might not even stay two miles. He is, and I, I just... Yeah, there's there's other horses there for me. I, I would love him to run well. And if the jumps <laughs> can steal another prize off the flat, that would used to be priceless, mainly just to see what Callum's face looks like. Although he'll be happy because yeah. he would have won. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll move on to Ibisenko, who I quite like at a price. Luke Nolan on board. Great name. Black Michael, do the draw. Oh, sorry. <laughs> he's, he's got into the role now. Ibisenzo. Ibisenzo. We've only got a few Ibisenzo. left. And I think me, Ad, me and Adam are still in there, aren't we? Uh, yeah, Adam is. Uh, Adam's going to get for a I'll say that now. If he dares. If he dares. <laughs> oh, I am not very happy about that. <laughs> I can't even... Right. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh. One draw too soon. Damn I'll, I'll, oh. I'll swap you. Like, <laughs> uh, Michael, are you happy with Ibisenko? Apparently not. Uh, no, I'm not happy with Ibisenko. Let's just move on. Okay. Unfair. <laughs> I, I liked his win last time. It was a really good uh, staying victory. Uh, st well, staying victory. I, I wouldn't necessarily say he's the most obvious winner of the race, but it would it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if he ran into the first, let's say six, and six six to one is a very big uh, each way price. So can either of you give uh, Ibisenko a favourable mention, Callum? Well, interestingly, two of the last three winners have won the Geelong Cup before going on to win the Melbourne uh, Cup. Trends. Um, <laughs> But trends are useless, you know. Oh yeah, so, <laughs> no, so much I, I mean, he won the the Sandown Cup um, last year over two miles. He's also um, shown that he stays two miles quite well over here. He was second in the Henry the Second to Opinion Poll um, last year as well when he was with Luke Kumani. He's with Peter Moody, obviously best known to be tra uh, to have trained Black Caviar. Um, but the the. The Geelong Cup was quite a weak race. It was on heavy ground. Forgotten Voice hated the ground. He was a favourite that day. Um, it's a tough ask, I think. But, I mean, it's, it's lively outsider. Probably in the lively outsider category, but nothing more. Yeah. Uh, Adam? Yeah, i put him in the uh, lively outsider category. It's also interesting, actually, going back through his form. He actually ran in England and was second to opinion poll in the uh, Henry II last that. year. Oh, sorry. And he <laughs> ran at York. Okay. <laughs> I'm just reiterating the point. Um, yeah, last time out, he ground it out eventually. He was one of them performances. And as Callum also said, the uh, G-Long Cup as well. Um, he's got a, an each-way chance, but he's not one that I'd be siding with. That's how I'd see it. And now, the time has come. For Adam to jinx <laughs> Michael's fancy. Right. No, this is, on, uh, this is not happening. Oh, and God on. said, oh, let please, there be please. Adam Webb on Verima. Please, please, please. God, no. Oh, that, that's an empty piece of paper. <laughs> right, I'm just checking there is still four people. Yeah, there is. Thank God for that. Right, please. Oh, Adam Webb 121. Else, Adam, please. Adam Webb 121. Please be someone else. Please be someone else. Please be someone else. Yes! Ah. Jane Bartlett, 100. Ah. No! Yes! She's my friend. <laughs> oh. Well, Verima has not gone to Adam Webb. Oh. 
Jane Bartlett 100 has Verima, who must have a good chance. And Michael, tell us why Verima has a good chance. Verima is the winner of the Melbourne Cup 2013. I absolutely adore this horse. Um, no surprise, not surprisingly, and I think it's probably the worst kept secret um, for the last couple of months. She was massive odds in about August time. I think I saw 50 to 1, 33s definitely um, in early September. And she's followed the form lines of the two previous French winners, Duna Den and Americaine. They've both been uh they both won the cup after winning the Prix de Kergelet, which she won uh in August. And this is the Aga Khan's first runner Australia. He is a very powerful owner in uh France and throughout the world really. Um but it's interesting he's decided to send her here. They've obviously think she's got a great chance and I couldn't agree more. The draw's very kind to her. She's uh and you remember what the the uh, one of the best mares to, that came to the uh, Melbourne Cup was Maccabee Diva, and she won it three times. So, Verima, 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 and I am Equipe Verima. Ale Verima. Ale Verima. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um, Adam, are you upset at not getting Verima? Yeah. Because if I'd have got over from the sweepstake, I was gonna nap her. But um, <laughs> I, I wanted to, I was gonna. I, I actually did consider napping her just to see Michael's face. Yeah, he doesn't look very impressed. Uh, she has an excellent chance, and she is one that I would definitely have in the first four. Um, it as Michael rightly said, the Aga Khan wouldn't be sending her over for a day out, which <laughs> for a long trip like that, but. She has got an excellent chance. I mean, you look at what she's done. I mean, she beat Joshua Tree last time out. Joshua Tree, who is a Canadian international expert, and won it again for the first time, which was fantastic to see. Um, I'm just looking for a four. I mean, she hand, she'll hand, she handles any ground. So she ticks, she ticks most of the boxes. And she has a strong chance of being France's third winner in as many years. Yeah, and... Uh... Good to you, Michael. Callum, has, is Michael on a winner? Well, she ticks a lot of boxes. I think uh, similar sentiments to what you, you two have said. Um, stays well, goes on any ground, has a good draw. The only negatives I had, uh, I would have liked to have had a, seen her had a prep run because American and Indian both had prep runs before winning the Melbourne Cup. That's my only real negative. Um, but she travels well. I mean, she she ran a, in Maidan in the Dubai Gold Cup last year, and she ran a quite a good race behind Cavalryman. Azima was in second, I think. Um, and so, I mean, she travels well, and she's particularly she could be one of the best handicap horses in the field, without doubt, of eight five. Um, but it's that prep run that I, I really worry about. I think it may just catch her out, possibly. But that's that's the only way, thing I've got to oppose her on. Yeah, I think everything's been said on Verima, but the jockey. Knows exactly what he's doing uh, in, in, in this race, huh? Standing jockey, yeah. Yeah, especially well in in this race, he knows what he knows what uh, what's going on. Adam, you have did Demi, Trey Blue, or Rosello? Ooh. Please <laughs> be Rosello. Which one do you want? Which one would you like out of them? Dear Demi. Dear I Demi. Or Trey Blue. So, I think Chalkbeach is still here, and he's tipped Dear Demi, so. Oh, uh, Dan uh, Munn, Dan Munn, if you're if, if you're still with us, give us an updated um, yeah, give give us an updated give, give odds. odds. I'd like to see them. I'm yeah. not I'm not going to use your odds as, to my decision. But yeah. I've just some updated my odds on the on the Adam Webb Nat Market. The person who will be hoping cheering home, dear Demi, is neither of them. Entry info. Oh so my if, God, there's two if, left. So there's two <laughs> left. There's two left, and we've got Dan Munn. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, dear Demi, uh, Michael, go on. Then you're on the big screen. Go. Uh, it'd be a, it'd be an absolute. It'd be gr it'd be great for Australian breeding because I think I'd look at the uh, the amount of horses, and I think there's four horses, maybe five, that were bred in um, Australia. All the others are imports from Germany, the UK, Ireland and various other places. Um, so it'd be great for uh, Australian breeding, but personally, she's not really my kind of... the, the uh, My idea of the horse that's really going to win this. I can't... Yeah, I can't really see her winning it. Um, she'll run well, 
but I don't know if this is going to be her year, and the draw hasn't exactly been favourable, so I'd be I'd be okay to leave her. She wouldn't really be on my radar. Okay, we have we have updated betting from Dan. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure if this was on your nap. What's it on? But it's the three that were left. Okay. Uh, Dear Demi evens trade oh. blue nine to four and Rosello a very generous hundred to one. I think he was hoping that Adam would have napped a horse while going along, but Adam has obviously kept it, unless he is actually going to tip Trey Blue or Rosello. No, 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 no. Uh, Adam, dear Demi. Dear Demi, she's got some good form this season. Don't get me wrong, I mean, the last two runs, I mean, the Caulfield Cup run is excellent, because she still got him from a wide draw and finished third that day under a very good ride from James McDonald. Second, only three days ago to side glance um, in the McKinnon stakes. Uh, the trip is the only issue for me, but I can see her running really well. She, If she does get the trip, she's one that will be in the first half dozen, first six, first eight for me. So she's got a good chance. Yeah, and uh, Callum? Definitely has to go in the lively outsider category. I mean, she's in fantastic heart lately. And she was a very good third in the Caulfield Cup. She had a good race behind side glance in the McKinnon just three days ago. Uh, she likes good ground. She uh, she should stay. I mean, the pedigree's touch and go on that, but I, th I think she'll stay okay. The draws could the draw could have been better, but um, yeah, I, I put her in the lively outsider category without backing. You can't back them all. <laughs> Did you sing Pokemon, Adam? Yes, I did. That's what I did. Fair enough. Um, do, Michael, do, 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 three blue. Do, do, do. We have Adam oh. or Dan. This is exciting. Do, 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 do. I'll tell you what, I'll put one in one hand and one in the other. Okay. And Adam can decide which one he wants oh. to go with. Okay. Uh, Can't I'm fit my go, fists into the screen. Right, I'm going to go with the right hand for Trey Blue and the left hand for... Rosella. No, no, you have to pick. Oh, alright. Which what? horse will be? Which person right. will get Trey can, Blue? Can I can I just interrupt for a second? There's yeah. a really good thing the Racing Post have just uh, tweeted. Um, yeah. it, it, it's an, it's a Twitter Melbourne Cup, and yeah. what some guys have set up is an individual yeah. race based on the amount of tweets that that horse's name has been involved in. So oh. Fiorenti has been tweeted. 1,956 times and is in the lead. If you'll, ex if you'll excuse me then. <laughs> uh, but Trey Blue been tweeted uh, 585 times. Royal, em Royal Empire's last. At 400. Not realistic, then, is it? <laughs> oh. um, right, back, <laughs> okay, back Mike, Michael, hold the hands up. Hold the hands up and I'll pick. Right. My right, right hand. hand. Yeah, you're so, right. Yeah. Trey Blue will be going. Trey Blue will, will be going to Chalk Peter. Good luck, Rosello. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Brilliant. No! Oh, that's oh, great. No! Trey Blue is the certainty no! of the year. No! <laughs> Trey Blue, it is for Dan Munn. Well done, Dan. Adam, even when you have a 50 50 chance, you still can't win. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Got kids sorry. listening. Sorry, Come on. Sorry, sorry. sorry, kids. It's after the watershed. Come on, it's after the watershed. It's not after my I think, time, though. I think I think sorry, I think we've sorry. had a we, we've done, had I think we've done seventeen shows where we haven't sworn. And I and I, think, I am always I, well, I, th I think I think each and every one of us has sworn in this show so far. Yeah. It's I don't know. I was swearing in a quote though. I don't know. Well, it's still swearing, so we apologise to anyone that we've offended. But if you get offended by a word, sorry. then sorry. Yeah. Seriously. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Trey Blue, um, Callum, Banker oh, of the Year. Sorry. Do you know she was in my final five or six, I'd say, and I just, I just uh, put her, um, put her out at the end. Um, I was just a little bit worried that she it might come a bit too soon for her because she's only a three-year-old. Um, but. She's really thriving, according to uh, Gay Waterhouse, since coming from France. And they had a very similar runner with Fiorenti last year, having first run for them and ran a cracker. So 
couldn't rule couldn't rule her out. But the draw, especially as she likes to be up with the pace, could be what what uh, does for her. I think uh, there was just an, enough for me to oppose, but not too much. I think she's got a good chance in general because she will stay. Pedigree's great for staying. So yeah. Yeah. Um, Mikael. Can't add a huge amount to that. I think the draw isn't helpful for a quite in it well inexperienced possibly in comparison to some of the other runners. It's four year olds. I th some of the form in some of the form in um uh, France is really, really strong, obviously second in the Grand Prix de first in the Grand Prix de Deauville just beat off uh Peng Lai Pavilion, who was fifth to Trev, I think, um at some point in his career, possibly the Prix de Verme. Um this horse has got a good chance. I wouldn't discount that, but the draw isn't helpful. And I, I don't know. I just, I don't know if this is gonna. This is the right race for uh, him. Yeah. Um, Adam, how gutted are you that you didn't get? Trey well, Blue? I'd rather have had Trey Blue than Ruskello, considering Ruskello's a maiden until last time out. Uh, Trey Blue. Last and time out. won before. Well, yeah. Last time out. That's what I'm no, saying. It's one before that. It won at Kempton. It was amazing. It's won at Kempton twice and Lingfield once. Kempton and Yarmouth once. Yarmouth. I'm thinking of another horse completely now. My it's won four blank. times. My mind's gone blank. I'm thinking of another race completely. It's won five times. I'm, yeah, Luke's can't count. <laughs> um, okay, Trey Blue. Last time I'll be Penguay Pavilion. And also in the race, I had Sirius Disabler as well. And Penguay Pavilion came out with Fifth to Trev in the Ark. And Sirius has come out and obviously improved leaps and bounds from that when second to far in the champion stakes. My only concern is the lack of experience, but if Gay Waterhouse is happy, then they must have a big chance. So, yeah, I can see him running well, but maybe he's a horse for next year rather than this year. I'd say that, he, that, that, that Trey Blue has uh, the... the the second best chance out of the inexperienced horses behind the machine Veloz de Coors. Yeah. Um, Michael, just to finalise our sweepstake, can you please draw the last name, please? I can indeed. The last name is... I wonder, oh, I wonder. I'd laugh if my name wasn't in there now and you pulled that completely... Yeah. <laughs> this is Mr. Oh. Darcy. Oh no, no, that's wrong. That's wrong. It's okay. Adam Webb. One. Adam Webb, one two one. You've been awarded Rosello. Rosello, who is drawn twenty four. I'll admit, I I got him wrong. I was thinking of a completely different horse. Completely I know who you were thinking of. I was thinking of one that actually did win at the weekend, though. The one that won the because it was a, it was a maiden in a group one. I Lexus, you won the night. Shame. The oh no. no. Yeah, uh, go on. You Adam. know what I'm thinking of? Yeah. Adam, talk, talk us through Rosello. Um, Rosello. Well, since he's gone to Australia, he's run two good races. Now, I'm slightly more confident considering I was thinking of the wrong horse, and that's a mistake on my behalf. So I apologise to everyone who's saying, oh, he's got I'm a little bit more confident on the other hand, but I would rather have Trey Blue or Dear Demi. He's yeah, um, he's gone to Australia, so... Callum, we thinking of Seamus Sh Award, Adam. That's the one I was thinking yeah. of. Yeah, I yeah. just thought, I, for some reason I thought he crept into the Melbourne Cup. And I don't know why. No, no. Um, yeah, Rosello. Well, I think he's the pace angle, not pace angle, but he will yeah, be leading, and that I think yeah. that that is the most important thing in the race. I think he'll because he'll be up with the pace and he's drawn wide. I think they'll go quite quickly early on. Um, so that'll change the complexion of the race just with him in. But in terms of his chances, I don't think he's got much uh, much of a chance. To be honest, he's a lot. He's the level over here is a lot less to the runners that w that we've got on the field. He won the Lexus last time out to get into the race, um, and, and may stay. Um, but I, others convince a lot more. I think um, yeah. even even off bottom weight, I can't see him winning. I think it'd be a big shock. Um, Michael, finish off the 24 for us. Rosello. No, thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs> that is the 24. Um, f before we move on to the naps, and uh, what, what we're going to do, that, I, that I've decided and the other guys probably don't know about, is that we're going to do our best four in the race. Just so it saves Adam not being completely embarrassed. Thank you. 
<laughs> no, no worries. Um, we have a full updated betting market from Dan Munn on what Adams uh, a nap will be. Okay. Uh, Royal Empire, Mount Athos, Sea Moon are nine to four joint favourites. Stiminan is eleven to four. Volos de Kurs is a silly price at nine to two after what you said earlier. Uh, Trade Blue five to one. Mass Marble six to one. Eight to one bar. What's the percentage markup on that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's taken that into consideration. Um, by the way, before I do do the nap, I need to ask these three: which horses am I banned from naming? Uh, no, 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 no! You're not banned from any. Oh, thank God for that. Verima, you're banned. No, you're oh, not. No. <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay. Verima, don't worry. So, shall we leave Adam till last, or make him go first? Go last. Go last. Makes it more fun. Makes it more. Tense for the okay, viewers. The viewers are all sat there praying. Give me order, please. In order. Your first, your first one has to be your nap. Yeah. In order. Oh, I don't know. It's, it's oh. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah. Simonon first. Seville second. Brown Panther third. Mars Marvel fourth. Thank you very much, Michael, our Melbourne Cup expert. Verima. <laughs> Verima. Royal Empire. Sea Moon, Brown Panther. Brown Panther. Um, for me, Morayan, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mount Athos, again. Is Adam dead? No, okay. Right. No. <laughs> uh, Mount Athos, uh, Ibisenko, um, Sea Moon, and Junaden. I think Luke's lost it. Does the first horse have to be the nap? The first horse has to be the nap. Oh, my my nap was in <laughs> way, though. Oh, oh. You can't, no. Not allowed. You have to go in all, all right, guns okay, blazing. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go, here we go. What? Wait, wait, one second, one second, one second. <laughs> Added thing onto Adam's nap. Since we haven't heard your Australian accent, and anyone that doesn't know, our game today was to throw in an Australian accent at any random time in the video. Why? I I really, do I said at any really random really time in the video accent. and not get noticed. I haven't heard Adam do this. I didn't so Adam, we were in an Australian accent and nobody noticed. You it didn't even. Australian. Okay, so Adam, Adam, <laughs> Adam, your four have to be done in an Australian accent. What? Your four have to be done and in an Australian the, accent. So my nap, I can't have it each way. Uh, no. Oh! I had a nap that was in each way selection. But okay, 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 okay. Right. Painful, man. Quit moaning. Bad election, I am not cursing Dandino, okay? Dandino is going to go in second, third, or fourth. The nap that I really didn't want to put up, but I've been forced to, uh, is Brown Panther. Whoa, 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 right, whoa, I'm whoa, leaving. Whoa. See ya. <laughs> Brown Panther right. each way <laughs> was the nap. Bye, Callum. Oh, I'm wait, I should go. Oh, <laughs> Brown Panther, Andino, Sea Moon, Segfredo. Oh. They're my first. They'd be my first right. four. Right, I'm back. I think Callum has genuinely gone there. Yeah, so do I. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so for these three that didn't hear me, Brown Panther, Andino, Sea Moon, Segfredo. Sorry, guys. Mm. There's only one in there. <laughs> There's two of mine. I really Three. wanted to say Brown Panther each way, but Luke's going, no, we win. Oh, well. Well, girls go each way for a nap. So that, that, that's awful. <laughs> There's the Melbourne Cup of 2013. It's all that. been pretty. Uh, Dan Munn says that the percentage mark on his uh, market... <laughs> Uh, six hundred and seventeen percent. Yeah, I had it about that. Wow. Definitely. <laughs> I like. I like. I like to thank Jolly for actually saying that he did hear me say uh, use an Australian accent. So thank you for that, Jolly. What's on Jolly? I have said ruined he someone's it. life apparently. <laughs> oh no, who have I ruined? I have You've ruined, ruined oh, sorry, Dan Man's Dan. life. Sorry, Dan. Sorry, Dan. Oh anyway. dear. Um, Shall we read out the other people's thoughts on Twitter? Yes. Yes. Uh, we did promise to. Yes. Any, anyone else? Uh, 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 if you have a, a tweet to read out? Yeah, I've got a few. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Um, let, let me see if I can, I can find them now. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, oh, by the way, Mr. Pistachio hits an X racehorse he used to loan, so that's the reason ah. behind that. All, all the best tweeters. All the best uh, tweeters are named after a horse. Um, Rick, Rick Adam, Castle. Adam, Adam, Adam's named after a donkey. <laughs> oh, Rick yeah. Castle, uh, JK underscore MCD is all aboard Sea Moon for the Melbourne Cup. Um, Mr. Pistachio likes Simon on each way. Uh, Alec Donnelly, who lives in Australia, so he should know about that. He's gone Seville, Verima, Mars. <laughs> that was Mar- Mar- another Mar- attempt, wasn't it? That um, was another attempt. But he is horrified that Stephen Arnold, Arnold could produce a gem on Sea Moon, so that would be interesting. I think that's the possibility as well. Um, of others, if I can find them, Max Banner likes Standino, Faulkner as well, and also Seville, sorry. Um, and I think that is nearly it. Uh yes. Oh no, Tom also likes Seminon. There we go. Um Is anyone asking any more tweets? To... Yeah, I've got a couple. Go on, Adam. I apologize for anybody who's back uh, Brown Panther. Uh, sorry my uh, sorry Callum. I um <laughs> if he wins, I'll be very happy. And you, got, you have to dare yourself to do something. Oh yeah, if Mascello wins, yeah, I have to dare myself. Oh Oh, that'd be interesting. I think it's really nice. Um, <laughs> um, Callum, your tweets, please. Yeah, a friend of mine, James Paulson, uh, tweeted, Matt Apples for me under the same weight as last year. Yeah. Hopefully he's given a better ride. Backed him at 9-1. to one. Hashtag value. And, uh, <laughs> How's that value? <laughs> and, um, I want double top. the price. <laughs> That's the opposite of value. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Chilman, uh, another friend of mine, said that. Uh, Come on, Simon, he said. So, uh, yeah, that's all I've got. And my friend from Australia, who I'm trying to find out, he's got the last two winners, and uh, I won't find out in time who he's going for this year. But you'll tweet um, it later. I had a tweet from uh, Liam Kenneth earlier who fans of Dan Dino. Uh, Laura McKibben tweeted me saying that she was really drawn to Brown Panther. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I really want Brown Panther to run okay. out. To so, the first four, I'll be pleased. <laughs> um, if we can just go across the panel again and say, firstly, our nap, and secondly, um, who we got in the sweepstake. Adam? <laughs> the nap is Brown Panther. I really want to do it each way. I don't want to play Sandino. And I got Rosello in the sweepstake. <laughs> uh, Callum? Um, sweepstake. Duna Dean and Simonon is my main fancy. Uh, Michael. <laughs> Verima. Verima, 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 Verima. And I can't even remember who I got in the sweepstake. Was it Ibisenzo, I think? Yeah. Woo! yeah. You got Ibisenko, who I put up in my first four. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> um, my nap is Mount Athos, the mighty Mount Athos. The Neptune winner of 2015, um, and in the sweepstake, I got Volus at Dacus, and I think I got the shortest price one out of all of us. Yes, yeah, I did at 16 to one. So there's one thing already won. Right, that's good. Uh, thank you, everyone that stuck with us throughout the whole thing. We realised it, it was a long video, but it's a big event. Why would you not make a long video for this? Wait till the Grand National next year. Wait till the Grand National, then you'll be <laughs> oh, sick of Three us. Three hours. Oh, my God. Three Lord. hours? Jesus Christ. I'll be sick of Adam by that point. <laughs> um, thank you to Michael, Callum, Adam, and myself for sticking around for this long and for doing the research. Uh, we hope we found you a winner. We hope you back the winner. Apologies for and, the language. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Um, we'll be my, tweeting. My outburst at Luke. Um. <laughs> we'll, some, some of us will be tweeting throughout the night. If we do, let us know your fancies. From all of us here, goodbye. Good day, man.